It is 9.30 p.m. Central Time on this Tuesday, August 7th, 2012, and we do have activity in the Atlantic Ocean. We're going to touch on these tropical disturbances in just a moment, but all of the main focus is on Hurricane Ernesto as it begins to make landfall across the eastern half of the Yucatan. As of the latest 7 p.m. Central Time Advisory from the Hurricane Center, maximum sustained winds have increased to 85 miles per hour, still making this a Category 1 on the hurricane wind scale, and Ernesto is moving off toward the west-northwest at 18 miles per hour. As you can see, the center of circulation is about to cross the coast, but we're not going to be done with Ernesto once it makes landfall, because it will likely re-emerge in the Bay of Campeche, and as you can see, the Hurricane Center is forecasting Ernesto to reattain hurricane status before it makes a second landfall somewhere near Veracruz. Also, as you can see, nearly all of the tropical models are in agreement with this general forecast. Conditions are beginning to rapidly deteriorate along the Yucatan coast, and one of the observations that are closest to the eye of Hurricane Ernesto at this time is this observation near Costa Maya, Mexico. As you can see, the pressure is quickly falling, and it's now down to roughly 991 millibars, and the latest wind gust has been recorded to be 47 miles per hour. The latest radar animation confirms that all of central and northern Belize has dodged the inner core of Ernesto and the hurricane force winds will remain over the Mexican portion of the Yucatan Peninsula. As of right now it looks as though the center of circulation, that being the eye, is going to pass just to the north of Chetumal and make landfall somewhere to the north of Costa Maya and eventually pass over the small town of Buena Vista. As you can see throughout the course of the afternoon and evening on the latest satellite imagery, Hurricane Ernesto became steadily more impressive and toward the tail end of this system about to make landfall, we saw another blow up of convection within the central dense overcast, very close to the center, in fact surrounding the center of circulation. So Ernesto was well on its way to becoming a Category 2 hurricane and it will be interesting to see what the final maximum sustained winds were before the center crosses the coastline. Once again, as of the 7 p.m. advisory, the winds were 85 miles per hour. I would not be surprised to see them finally go down at 90 miles per hour, if not by the 10 p.m. advisory, then possibly by the post analysis during the off season. And if it wasn't for land interaction, Ernesto would have become a major hurricane in all likelihood had it been given another one to two days over water. As you can see, based on the mid and upper level conditions, being portrayed by the water vapor imagery. Conditions were very favorable for steady intensification. You can see that the outflow pattern is nearly perfect in all quadrants and convection over the course of the past 24 hours has been steadily moving closer to the center of circulation. Once Ernesto passes through the Yucatan Peninsula, the Hurricane Center is forecasting Ernesto to re-intensify to a Category 1 hurricane over the Bay of Campeche. And although conditions in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere combined with very warm sea surface temperatures are favorable for restrengthening. There is some question as to whether or not the storm will be far enough off the coast to really be able to become a hurricane once again. And based on a slight southerly wobble over the past six hours, I am leaning toward no reintensification toward a hurricane, but perhaps remain a tropical storm until it finally moves into mainland Mexico after a second landfall. Meanwhile, we have more activity following Ernesto and as of right now, it comes in the form of two tropical waves that the Hurricane Center is monitoring in the central and eastern Atlantic, and the one closest to the Cape Verde Islands by far looks the most impressive, and this one does have a 30% chance of development within the next 48 hours. However, the current mindset here at 28storms.com is that neither one of these two systems are going to develop, and a more potent tropical wave that will be exiting Africa within the next 96 hours will be the one to watch. Here is the latest 6 to 7 day GFS 850 millibar vorticity forecast. You can see both of the initial waves not doing a whole lot, but within 72 to 96 hours we have a much stronger tropical wave exiting the coast of Africa, and by day 7 it's forecast to be a tropical storm and situated due east of the Virgin Islands. Currently the upper level vertical wind shear is only marginally conducive for development in the central and eastern Atlantic. But over the next three to five days, we're going to see another area of upper level ridging move out of the coast of Africa, and it will be overlapping the tropical wave. You can see it here by 72 hours, centered nearly over the Cape Verde Islands, and it will begin to spread westward along with that new wave axis. And that's why we think that the best service convergence is going to be associated with this upcoming system, and it will have the best chance of development over the next week. 
Development overall over the next week from any system near the coast of Africa is likely to be somewhat slow to occur because this wave is forecast to leave the coast at a rather high latitude where sea surface temperatures are only marginally conducive for development. So this should help keep the system on a westward heading for at least the next five to seven days combined with a lot of mid-level ridging centered between 40 and 60 degrees west longitude and beyond day seven it's very questionable as to whether or not the system will move into the West Atlantic as it is a 7 to 10 day forecast. For now though, the long range ECMWF and GFS models are maintaining some of the troughing near the U.S. eastern seaboard and over the next 10 to 14 days they recurve this system as a tropical cyclone somewhere out across the West Atlantic but this is highly dependent on the 7 to 10 day synoptic pattern and it's just too early to get into those details. So our thoughts and prayers are with everyone within the central and eastern half of the Yucatan this evening as it looks as though the harshest weather will occur over the next few hours, especially just to the north of Costa Maya where the eye of Hurricane Ernesto is currently making landfall. The greatest threat over the next couple of hours will be the risk of storm surge, especially in low-lying areas, heavy rainfall and potentially flash flooding along higher terrain, and of course the threat of very strong winds and downed trees. So that's all we have for now from an analysis perspective of Ernesto. Hopefully you've taken all the precautions if you live in the Yucatan. And if you can safely document the storm with a few pictures or video, we would love it if you could share it with us as we would post it on our Facebook, Twitter, and the website. But don't go ahead and put yourself in danger. We don't want anyone to get in trouble just over a picture or a video, so please keep that in mind. And keep it tuned to 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app as we continue to follow Ernesto as it moves into the southern Gulf, along with the upcoming tropical disturbances that are exiting Africa.